everyone who has been in attendance of the GBC first annual mini conference. We really do appreciate you. I do want to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is Dr. Tracy Kiger. Kaiser, sorry about that. Dr. Cra Tracy Kaiser is a first generation high school graduate and the only person in her family to graduate from college. Uh, Dr. Kaiser's uh, believed that education was the only way out of her neighborhood and it was infested with drugs, gangs, and hopelessness. And for this reason, she has focused on education and academic success. Uh, education is extremely important to Dr. Kaiser and she's earned a bachelor's degree in mathematics, a single subject teaching credential in mathematics, and a master's of arts degree in curriculum and instruction a master's of arts degree in mathematics instruction and a doctor of education degree to address what she perceives to be a lack of support for low income and minority students who are struggling academically. She is a mathematics professor at San Diego City College as well as the math center director. She wants to gain a deeper understanding of teaching and learning, expand her knowledge of mathematics and education to help close the academic achievement gap in mathematics by deepening mathematical understanding of students at Promise. Thank you so much, Dr. Tracy Kaiser, for joining us, and you have the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Michael. I tried to turn on my camera, but um, it's uh, disabled, so I'll go ahead and get started. Let me try again. Oh, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Tracy Kaiser, and I am going to be sharing my story with you today in hopes of motivating you to pursue your dreams. Let me share my screen. So as was mentioned, can, you, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I am a um, math professor at San Diego City College. I was just promoted from assistant to associate professor last fall. Um, it just took effect this fall. So I will be starting my fall semester as an associate professor of mathematics. And um, I wanna share my story with you today. Just to give you a little bit of background about myself, Um, I am a middle child of three. Um, my mom was a single mother. She raised all three kids by herself. Um, she had us at a very young age. My brother, she had got pregnant with my brother at 16, had him at 17. And then right after that, got pregnant with me, had me at 18 and following, got pregnant with my sister and had her right after. As a result, um, my mom dropped out of high school to, to try to support and provide for her three, her three kids um, as a single mother. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood which was infested with drugs, gangs, violence, and hopelessness. So for me, education was my way out. And I am first generation high school and the only college graduate in my family. But I would like to say that as a result of me um, finishing school and pressing my way, uh, my mom has since went back and she's obtained her GED and she is now a college student um, trying to obtain her bachelor's degree. So you never know who's watching you. Even the people that look up to you, you have no idea um, they can just be watching you as well. Um, as mentioned before, um, I, I earned my bachelor's teaching credential and two masters at San Diego um, State University. And then I transferred from there to receive uh, my doctorate in teaching and learning. While going to school, um, I was working full time. The moment I got my bachelor's degree, I started teaching high school math. So before transitioning to college, I taught high school. And so I will go to school at I will go to school at night and teach all day. So teach all day, go to school at night. My schedule was packed. So during these time that time, I had to learn to really manage my time. I had to um, sacrifice a lot of time with family and friends. And instead of hanging out, I was in the library studying. I had to be very strategic about my future goals and where I wanted to end up. So I already knew my why. I had my why in mind. And as a result of that, that kind of helped me stay on track um, and pursue my dreams. I didn't take a break from school. I went back to back 
from degree to degree to degree. Um, the moment I got my second master's degree, I took a year off before starting my doctorate degree. So that was the only break I took. But even in, when I took that break, I felt weird not being in school. So I knew there was more in store for me. Um, I, a lot of people look at what I've accomplished and they just, for them, it, it appears like it's so easy. And I'm here to stand, I'm standing before you today to tell you that it's not, the road has not always been easy. However, comma, it has been worth it for me. And while going through school, I had a, a solid support system, but at the same time, I had teachers who doubted whether or not I could, for example, be a teacher or pursue a career in mathematics because there were not a lot of people that looked like me um, in these courses. And so I've had cases where professors didn't believe in me because of the way I talked. Just simply not, don't even know me, but just because of the way I talked, um, they didn't believe in me. And I will share a little bit, I will share a story um, in a little bit. I wrote one of my experiences in the form of a story. And this is probably my fifth time sharing it. Uh, today will be my fifth time. Um, it's very near and dear to me. And so as a result, to help me stay on track, um, I wrote it in form of a story so I can just read it to you. If I pause in between, that's because this story literally takes me back to the day this incident happened to me. So sometimes I tear up, sometimes I do not, but I just ask you ahead of time to be patient with me. Um, and I, I, I promise you, I will finish the story. Whether I'm crying or not, I will finish the story. So as a result of professors not believing in me and me question and them questioning my ability to do mathematics and also teach mathematics, I began to doubt myself. And at the same time, I worked hard behind the scenes. So the, I, I was silencing class. I stopped asking questions. Um, I would study all night and just stay up and work hard. Um, so my work, I, I showed them more in my work than my voice. And I was silenced, I would say, for about 10 years. And again, we'll get into how I broke my silence a little later. Um, so I... So I was silenced because professors doubted me. And in addition to that, I didn't see anyone in my classes that, that looked like me. So I developed this imposter syndrome. I was wondering if I actually belonged in these math classes or even pursuing a math degree because there was no one else that looked like me. So I was wondering if I would get figured out or if people will start to follow me and, and wonder and question me and really try to get, dig deeper into my background and my history to see if I actually belonged um, in these classes. Nonetheless, I still persisted. Um, I still worked hard. And that's how I knew I was in the right place. I knew that I was pursuing my passion and my dreams to serve and just be there for others. So I decided to become a math teacher because I love math and I love helping others. So that was the only way in my mind that I can merge my two passions. So for me, I go hard for my students. I go hard and I and I advocate and I be the and I am the I am a voice for them. And I also teach them to be a voice for themselves. And so that they are not silenced along the way. So for me, my why is to serve, advocate, and pave the way for others. And I challenge you all today, if you haven't discovered your why, you may be, you're all in college already, and you may be wondering, what am I doing here? Well, you started for a reason. So the moment you can identify your why, the easier it is for you to stay on track and be disciplined and motivated and work hard, even when times are tough, even when things become more challenging. And I know that we're in this virtual setting and learning it may look a little bit different for you. And so I still challenge you to discover that why. Why are you pursuing a certain major? Why did you enroll in college? Whatever that is, if you have to write it on a sticky note and read it every day or put it in your phone as a reminder for you to read it every single day, I challenge you to do that. And I promise you, it will help you help keep you grounded, especially during the times where you feel like giving up. So I'm going to to stop here and read my story. Again, bear with me. Um, one second. Okay. Okay. The title of my story is called 
I can show you better than I can tell you. Is a terminal degree a realistic aspiration for a young black female who grew up in the projects? Was I prepared to compete with white women? Did I have the will and the courage to find my voice? I am a first generation high school graduate and I am the only person in my family to graduate from college. Education is extremely important to me. It was my way out of the projects which was infested with drugs, gangs, violence, and hopelessness. I have always been focused in school and I try my best to succeed. Since I can remember, I've always wanted to be a math teacher. I love helping others and I love math. So I merged my two passions and applied to the teaching credential program. After graduating with my bachelor's degree in mathematics from San Diego State University, I applied to the teaching credential program so I can pursue my passion of teaching high school mathematics. Instead of receiving an acceptance, an acceptance letter into the program, I received a letter requesting that I interview for the program. I was excited. I saw this as an opportunity and a chance to share my passion for teaching, learning, and helping others. When I arrived, I noticed a counter on the left and a small conference area to the right. Two white women were seated next to each other. The one on the right was petite. She had brown eyes. Her hair was cut into a short bob. I later learned that her name was Dr. Crabtree. And I would like to say, stop real quick and say, for the sake of this story, I have pseudo names. So these are not the actual names of um, the professors who interviewed me. The other woman, Dr. White, had ash brown hair pulled back into a ponytail. When I entered the room, neither of them greeted me nor extended their hand. I sat in the chair facing them. Dr. Crabtree said, Tracy, you are among a few applicants who have been randomly selected to participate in this interview. We reviewed your transcripts and application, but we have a few additional questions. I was excited because I was finally getting a chance to share my interest in teaching and learning. I had anticipated possible questions they would ask me. I even prepared a list of responses. As I said, as I sat in my chair, I noticed that they had my official transcripts right next to them. Dr. Dr. Crabtree picked up my transcript and asked, I see you completed mathematics for high school students. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience in that course? I responded with confidence. Dr. Dr. Crabtree asked all the questions. Dr. White never uttered a word and her eyes will not meet my gaze. Excuse me. Dr. Crabtree asks, in, in the spring, it looks like you received a D in Math 501. What happened? Before I can respond to explain to her that was a semester, I became really ill and point her to the B that I received after retaking the course the following semester. She quickly interrupted. Are you sure this profession is for you? Excuse me, I asked, confused and puzzled. You know, she said, eyebrows raised and her head slightly tilted after what seemed like an inordinately pause. She continued, because of the way you talk, I was quite surprised. I certainly was not expecting that observation, but I responded, what do you mean by the way I talk? How do I talk? Dr. Crabtree retorted, I've, ex I've examined your transcripts. You're good at math, but I'm concerned with your ability, your ability to cohesively explain the content so students can understand. I looked her straight in her eyes and I said, I can show you better than I can tell you. Okay, Tracy, who was notifying? I walked out of that interview feeling like my language was inadequate. I left wondering if, she, if what she said to me was true. 
If so, why was I just now hearing it? I begin to question my, my work ethic and determination all because a stranger. Upon entering the program, one of my required classes was actually with Dr. Crabtree. I must say, I was terrified, yet I was determined to show her what I was capable of. As a result of being terrified, I stopped speaking and asking questions in class unless it was required of me. My silence spoke loudest in my writing assignments and my presentations. As time passed in the class, I was able to meet and establish relationships with my cohorts. Every time I introduce myself to someone in the class, I will ask, I will ask them about their interview. No one in my class had any idea what I was talking about. I was the only one who was interviewed. At this point, I became furious, but I continued to work hard. Towards the end of the course, I presented my final presentation with a classmate. Immediately following our, immediately following our presentation, Dr. Crabtree walked up to me and whispered, Tracy, I'm so proud of you. I can't believe we almost didn't admit you into the program. It took so much out of me to smile and say thank you. I almost cried. Not only did I become silent in her class, I did not speak in any of my other classes. I had a fixed mindset in my ability to speak and write, yet I did not let that stop me from pursuing my, from pursuing my dreams. As a result of studying in a doctoral program at UCSD and pursuing my passion to help underrepresented students, I am no longer silenced because I have to be the voice for them. I am a product of poverty. I am a product of Southeast San Diego. My mother was a single parent of three. Witness, witnessing her struggle and being surrounded by drugs, gains, violence, and hopelessness motivated me to break the generational curse through education. I am a living testimony for students who come from low-income families, neighborhoods that are contaminated, and a government that has given up on them that they can not only make it out of their situation, but they can succeed. I could have walked out of that interview completely defeated. Instead, I press my way so that I can help pave the way for others. This is what ignites my spark. This is my why. So for me, I had to find my voice and it took me a while, I would say for me to find my voice. So I challenge anyone out there that may be doubting them, themselves, that may be wondering whether or not they belong, uh, that may be afraid to speak up. They may have had similar, a similar situation as I did to find, that, find your inner voice. And what I, what I typically do with my presentations, I like to come up with an acronym for what sticks out to me. And so for me, and I wanna share it with you all, voice for me tells me that victory over insecurities changes everything. I was insecure. I doubted myself. I didn't really know. But the moment I had victory over that thing is the moment that my life changed because I was able to speak life into others. So me sharing my story, every time I get an opportunity to share, I will share my story because that's another victory for me. I have no idea who's on the other end of the screen and who have may, may have needed to hear this today. And it may not be in the area of education. It could be something else that may be prohibiting your education that you may be going through. So figuring out what that is and finding your voice and being able to walk away with your voice, victory over insecurities changes everything. It literally changes everything. It changes your mindset. It changes your, your, your view of yourself, regardless of it, what it, anyone else thinks. And I would like to share with you. So I, I mentioned earlier that I received my bachelor's, my teaching credential, and my two master's um, all at San Diego State University. And it was weird. Every time I felt like I was in a different program, um, I would run into Dr. Crabtree because going, walking to my car, I, I passed her office or she would just be in the hall and she would get an update, to, update from me. And I was always doing something else. I, was, I went from one master's degree program to, to the next. And so I would update her and she was always like surprised, like, wow, 
you know, I can't believe we almost didn't admit you to the program. Like, wow, you're doing great things. And so I never said anything back or disrespected her or wanted to throw anything into her face. For me, I knew that I had to work hard regardless. Sometimes you may be in classes that you don't want to take or you're wondering why. Think about your why, your purpose for being in school. So I challenge you to think about what is at least one voice that you would commit to walking away with today and work on that thing. Really work on it. It's a, I have to work on it. Dr. Crabtree may have instilled something in me that gave me a negative mindset, but it was my responsibility to overcome that. She's gone on about her life. She's, she has no idea what she did to me. And I didn't have the strength back then and to say something to her. So when you walk away with voice, you're taking your voice back. So I walked away with a victory over an insecurity that changed everything for me. I took my voice back because now I'm speaking and I'm sh sharing my story. When you walk away with voice, you make room to speak life into and accomplish your dreams. Whatever you speak, I, I, everything that I've spoken since seventh grade, moving forward in my life has pretty much come to pass. So a lot of times we think about what we want to do, but I challenge you to start speaking life over whatever goals and dreams that you have. Write those things down. Revisit your goals. If you write down a goal and walk away, how do you know if you, if you, how do you measure it? How do you know if you have improved? How do you know if you're growing in that area? So I walked away with my voice, my victory over that insecurity, which changes everything for me. And I was, now I speak life into myself. I have index cards, I have aspirations and I have um, affirmations, excuse me, that I speak over myself. I couldn't do that before because internally I was messed up all because of stranger doubted me. When you walk away with voice, you make room to speak life into others and help pay the way. Our lives are not just about us. I had no idea my mom would eventually go back to school, get a high school diploma, and is now a college student. And she's actually a student at the college that I teach at. How amazing is that? And so for me, although it was hard for me to share my story. Um, it gets easier every time. I still tear up, as you saw when I was reading my story, but I, I, I complete it. And that's a goal of mine is to never stop because I'm crying so much because I'm taken back to that, to the incident that happened. And I can't share my story with you all. So this quote I walk with I, every day, stand before the people you fear and speak your mind, even if your voice shakes. If you have something you, you believe in and you stand for, and do not silence yourself. And you're the only one who can break your own silence. It all starts with you. I see a hand raise. I don't know if I should do questions and answers right now. Um, can we hold them for just a moment and then just let me know when you're ready and I'll be sure to unmute. Okay. Okay, I'm almost done, I promise you. And I'll take whatever questions you have. Um, Breaking my own silence started with me. It took me a long time. I tell you, I was literally silenced for about 10 years. I, I kid you not. Um, what, I broke, what broke my silence is when I was in my doctoral program. That was the first time I had to write my story and share my story. I don't want you to be silenced for that long. You can start today. And I'm almost done and I'll get to the questions. So I have a video here that I wanna play. It's about five minutes of encouragement. Um, I want to go ahead and play that, and then I will stop and ask questions. Dr. Kaiser, I'm not sure if it's working on other people's ends. I can't hear it. Sometimes if we stop our cameras, it will, it'll increase the bandwidth. Okay. Okay, let me stop my camera. And I'll try to play it again. How was that? 
It's playing. I see the caption, but I don't hear an audio. Okay, let me try this. I have a backup just in okay. case that didn't work. So let me let me um let me go straight to I had a backup just in case. It doesn't how's this? Uh no not, not playing yet. Is it possible to drop the link in the chat so people can maybe Absolutely. do it? Absolutely. Yes, let me drop it in the chat. There you go. Is it is it possible if I stop sharing if some if, if maybe you can try to share it? Um I can I can try. Me, it's probably me, gonna do the same thing on my end, but I'm happy to give it a shot. Let me okay. hear Let it. Me, I, I can try oh, give me one second. Okay. Um I did when I did the testing, it actually worked. Um Let me see. Let me see something. Okay, it's working on my end. I can see, I think it's a, I think it's the issue is when we start trying to share, but I'm more than happy to try to share it from my end. Oh, it look okay. Guys, I'm gonna see if I can share for just a moment. Um, You won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up. Cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You're already in pain. You're already hurt. Get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you today that you can come here. You can jump up. You can do flips. You can be excited when we give away money. But listen to me. You will never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money. Because I got it in here. So if you want to make six figures, you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. you got to be willing to work out for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you got to want it. You gotta go days without, listen to me, you gotta wanna be successful so bad that you forget to eat. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in free season. I'm gonna say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in free season. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA, and even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meet with you. You say, I don't want to talk to your TA. I don't pay the TA. I pay you to teach me. So you will have to find some time to meet me. If I got to meet you at the mall, if I got to meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me. All men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0, 3.0, they went to the Ivy League high schools came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about hearts. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have hearts. That's number one. Watch number two. Number two, catch number two. I wrote it down. I want to make sure you got it. It says, to be, watch this, watch this. We're talking about sacrifice now. The important thing is this. You're right in what I'm saying. Because I only have about three more minutes. Listen to me. The most important thing is this. 
to be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. That's the number two thing. You got to catch that one. To be able to, listen to me, at any moment. Some of you, you can make sacrifices when Monday Night Football is not on. You can make a sacrifice. But when the game come on, for some reason, you just attach to it. For some of you, when your favorite show come on, you, you, can, be, you can make sacrifices on Sunday when there ain't nothing going on. But when your favorite show comes on Monday, man, some of you, you focus into the phone ring, and then you like, I got to answer it. If I don't answer the phone, I'm going to die. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm going to hurt somebody. Some of you need to give up your cell phone. Because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. And somebody has told you, you couldn't live without it. I'm talking about going deep now, giving up stuff. Watch what it says. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could be. I don't do well in math. You're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. But I dare you to fail in writing for a whole year to see if you can get to the end. I dare you to fail. I dare you to take that same class over and over again. I dare you to stop dropping classes like you saw. Always want to give up. I'm dropping. Why are you dropping? I'm so grateful that the slaves didn't drop and quit. Say, I'm just going to stop. I'm a slave. I'm just going to be a slave. I'm going to quit. Listen to me. The slaves said, we will live because one day we will become. Thank you for playing that on your end. Um, I got kicked out of Zoom in the mist, and I do not have access to my turn on my camera. Okay, give me just a moment. I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay, I need to Thank stop you. sharing. <laughs> sorry, the text hmm. side. One of the great challenges oh. in this room is knowing. Okay, then let me move you back up here in just a sec. Huh, hold on. Why don't I see? Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. There you go. Great. Thank you so much for, for that. Yeah, I, I had like a triple backup on that video and it still <laughs> didn't, um, you know what? Technology changes everything. <laughs> okay, I know what happened. So when you, when I shared my screen, um, you have an option to click on the bottom, which I did go over this in my tech, in the tech session. And I, and I did, I was so into, talking that I didn't click the, bo the two boxes at the bottom. That's what happened. Oh, it's okay. um, but it still, it worked, it worked out. Um, so, so pretty much before I go into question and answer, I'm just, I'm just motivating you all to don't give up, don't stop, don't quit. Um, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of things, but I promise you it will be worth it. We spend a lot of time, especially on social media, like we get on social media, we're scrolling. Next thing you know, it's an hour or two later. Just imagine how much time, just learning how to maximize your time, studying. You're in school. You may be working full time. You may be parents out there. So how are you managing your time? Are you looking at your schedule day by day or at a glance? Are you looking at your schedule and preparing it for a week ahead and filling in gaps wherever necessary? Um, just being more intentional about your day your day-to-day -day and your time because you cannot get those out 24 hours back in a day. And I know that we're going, I have a little bit of time left. So I want to go into, um, oh, I'm going to do that. Um, any questions? I know Mimi had her hand raised, so I can start with Mimi. Um, and Mimi, you're welcome to unmute and come on the line. I know that um, when you were talking about your, your story, um, many of us that have gone through a lot of trauma, um, especially in my case, 
they people will tell you to shut up. Like literally, I was told by my grandmother, shut up, be quiet. Don't nobody want to know your story. Well, we will find out there was a reason she did not <laughs> want. And we just found it out during the pandemic. So I'm 42. I just found out what wow. the real excuse was. So I'll say it, wait, I have been carrying somebody else's sin. Somebody else's sin. For three decades, I was quiet mm. for three decades. And I did not pursue my education that I should have because other people needed to hide me. And you could figure that out after mm. that. But until and right. then I said, Oh, you ain't got no right to silence me. Ironically enough, she actually passed away. And some other people that were involved in hiding me passed away. And I'm sitting up here like, okay, God, so you about to get ready for me. So mm -hmm. I want you to understand I'm giving you over here digital hugs because your story needs to be told and it hurts to even still tell the story. And those that say get over it, don't, don't you know, I, I tell people don't ever tell nobody to get over that because you don't know their experience and what tools they may or may not have had. And what are you going to add to their toolbox to help them make it through it? That That's the you know, one of the keys. And I think education on my end, which was stolen from me for almost three decades, is the way for me to get out. And then also to teach my kids. And I'm going to also tell you, young lady, that my twins are STEM girls too. And they love nice. math. And I, you know, in the past few months with, with COVID and all of that, I've seen more Black female mathematicians than I've ever in my life at the age of 42. So thank you so much for your sacrifice because your story is your sacrifice to help perpetuate other people. You're welcome and thank you for that. Um, I, I know we, we, we were told and we're silenced even as kids growing up, we're not wondering why parents may silence us or people may silence us. Silence us. I, I believe it's like a generational thing, you know, keep things on the hush. But eventually someone becomes a silence breaker and maybe that's that's you for your family right and so or your situation so we all in every aspect of our lives become, become a silence breaker in some way shape or form and it's not by accident dr kaiser i didn't want to hold the floor in case somebody else had a question um, but that was yes. I put in the chat. Can you talk to us a little bit, a bit about the importance of internal dialogue? I have two teenagers and they have teachers standing in front of them who say, you know, you probably won't like math. Math is not fun. Math is not this. And, and, and I'm always really kind of stressing to my children the value. Um, so can you talk to us about how do you share that type of, uh, you know, using your voice in a positive way with your students, particularly when it comes to math? Right, so what I do, so I know my students come to me, most of them with a fixed mindset regarding math. I even get emails before semester starts. I'm nervous about taking the class. I haven't had math in, and I teach college at a community college. So my, my students range from the traditional 18, 19 year old to maybe like the 60, 70 year old. So I have a range of, of students. So it is my job and my duty to instill in them that, that growth mindset and that confidence, letting them know that Everyone has different talents and abilities. Yes, you're going to have to apply yourself. You're going to have to put in work, but I'm right there with you. That is my, my job is to ensure you succeed and start to change your dialogue. Start to speak whatever you have a negative thought about mathematics or just your ability in any area. Like find a way to combat that thing. Because if not, that, that internal internalization becomes a realization because then you start to speak those things and i do believe when we you are what you speak and when we speak those things we become in certain areas those things and so we start to um believe what's inside negative or positive and then it comes outwardly and then we behave as, as such so but that also means that it can change so if that internal dialogue changes to a growth mindset mentality and i think it's good that for you to continue just instill that. So although I went through my situation in my head and internally, my mom was there. My mom always said, I want you to be, you, you know, you're smart, you're capable, you can do whatever you want to in this world. I want you to be just like me, but better. Work hard, work, work smart, baby, never give up. 
So my mom's internal um, words became internal because she's instilled them in me since I was a kid. So that never left me, even till today. It, it never, I hear her voice in me mixed now with my voice. So together that helps me get through a lot of stuff. And I am a believer. Um, I know I'm not here by accident. And so I know it's nothing but the grace of God that I'm, I'm here and I'm speaking and I'm sharing my story. So those, my mom, God, myself, really gives me that strength so if you instilling that in your babies at a young age you know the and i don't know what platform we we're talking we're on but you know um it says train up a child in the way they should go so i believe all my mom's training helped me not depart from my purpose right and her, her instilling in me the word and her instilling in me all these things helped me stay focused and grounded and rooted thank you for that you're welcome. Are there any other questions? I'm trying to look, go back and forth between the chat and, okay, is it Javon? Did I say that correctly? It's Javon, but it's, it's okay. Can you hear me? J Javon, okay. I wanna get it right, Javon. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, first off, thank you for your story, Dr. Kenza and um, I'm, I'm, for what it's worth, I'm glad that you're a doctor. Like I'm proud and stuff of a woman of color that has a, a doctor degree. It's just, it's just nice to see. And um, thank you. My question is, how was you able to deal with the trauma? Not only deal with the trauma, but deal with like the external forces that was like pressing against you, weighing against you. Like not as much as you don't even know about that situation, but putting their two cents in any situation. And you still able to work like a full time schedule and maintain a high enough college uh, grade grade output? How how was you able to do that? Uh, honestly, prayer and I, I I I everything I have, everything I am is by the grace of God. So for me, it was all mental. So I. I Navigating internally was a struggle. Why was stronger than what the stranger, the stranger who doubted me. My why and my desire was bigger than that. And that's why I mentioned earlier, if you can focus on your why, that helps you stay rooted and grounded and disciplined. So I'm I'm very organized and orderly. And I and and, and I know I have my why in mind. And the thing is, before um so I was a high school math teacher. Now I'm a college professor and also the director of the math center. Now, like as you open up doors or navigate through your journey, you're going to have things attach or add on to your why or what you want to do. So now I'm in this space where I want to become a dean, president, vice president of a college, perhaps a chancellor, because I know that students need people in those positions that haven't forgot about them in the classroom. And so for that reason, these external forces, it may sound easier, be easier said than done. It doesn't really matter in comparison to my why. That keeps me, I grind every day. I work hard every day because I have in me a desire to make a difference and be a voice and advocate for students. So my why is what keeps me, root, excuse me rooted and it outweighs the external forces. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I think we have uh, one about a minute. I'm trying to check the chat as well. Yeah, so I'm first generation high school, first I'm, I'm home, home buyer as of five years ago. So I'm a lot of first in my family, um, but it just shows that it can be done and that I'm not here by accident. So I wanna leave with you all today. You're not here by accident. Don't worry about how long it's taking you to finish school. Don't worry about if you just started and you're much older. Everyone's journey is different and no one can judge your journey. And I wanna remind you that a degree does not say it took someone 10 years to finish, four, year, four years to finish. A degree only has a completion date. So don't let time get you stuck in not finishing school or pursuing your dreams because everyone's journey is different. 
I cannot look and judge at anyone else, else's journey in comparison to mine. I don't know what I would do if I had to walk in your shoes. So I hope my story motivates you and not makes you feel any kind of way in a negative manner because everyone's story is different. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to jump back over to the main room. Uh, but again, thank you so much for the motivation, for the reminders, no matter where we are and what place we are in our life. Hopefully we have taken something today that we can apply, not just to where we are and what we are doing, but what, what model we are setting for our children, our families, and even people we don't know. So again, thank you so much for, for fighting and sharing uh, that inspiration with us today. Thank you so much and see everybody over in the other room. Go ahead. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a nice day, everyone. Okay. Thank you.